Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. A very warm welcome to Addis Dialogue. Ethiopia has important livestock sector, with poultry being the second largest subsector after cattle. However, this East African nation has not made the best out of this. What is the major reason behind this, and how is the International Livestock Research Institute contributing positive share? We're going to talk about a host of issues in this regard. And to put things into perspective, I'm joined by Dr. Tadela Desi. He's principal scientist at the International Livestock Research Institute and adjunct professor of animal breeding and genetics at the Baharda University. Do stay with us. Many thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me. So what are some of the major undertakings by the International Livestock Research Institute in beefing up the productivity of the poultry subsector, sir? I think we better start from identifying constraints. Why we are not doing well in that sector. The subsector, the poultry subsector I'm referring, can be divided into two broadly in Ethiopia. One is the commercial sector, which is very, very small in, you know, in capacity and in volume. But the second component is the smallholder poultry production system, where the majority of our farm households have a you know, small number of animals they keep at household level for home consumption and also they sell you know, anything that's left from household consumption. In 2013, we did an extensive survey to understand the constraint and at the same time the potential of developing the smallholder sector in Ethiopia and other African countries. We came up, you know, the result shows us that it is a system where it is characterized as low input, low output system. The animals are owned by women, managed by women, and also the proceeding from the subsector goes to the, to benefit the household women. The third one is we identified also there is no designated an institute or even private sector companies that serves the needs and the aspiration of the smallholder farmers. After we identified those constraints, we came up with an idea of working to address the needs and the aspiration of the smallholder farmers. Number one, we started by identifying tropically adapted and more productive breeds from all over the world, source them, and test them here in Ethiopia with 3,000 households from all over the country. Aimed at identifying farmer preferred breeds. Once we identify farmer's breeds, but farmer preferred breeds, we link those identified and farmer preferred breeds to private sector companies for multiplication and delivery at scale. We started serving the smallholder farmers by so doing. In addition to that, we also established innovation platforms at a national and community level to serve as a space for identifying constraints and co-create solutions. In doing this all, we have been partnering with our national partners, Ministry of Agriculture, the Ethiopian Ministry of Agriculture Research, and private sector companies. So we started with that, and now we, are, we have come in a long way, and we achieved a lot. Talking about you know, collaboration with other sectors, in 2023, uh, the Ministry of Agriculture and the International Livestock Research Institute launched the first ever poultry development strategy, right? Yes. So how is this strategy helping to enhance the productivity as well as the competitiveness of the poultry subsector? Absolutely. I mean, ILRI, or International Livestock Research Institute, is supporting the Ministry of Agriculture and other actors in the sector to, in, you know, developing that poultry 10 years de development strategy. In developing that strategy, 
we analyzed the system, we collected, you know, what are the constraints, what are the challenges, and what are the opportunities to develop this sector. Once we identified the challenges, the opportunities, we sat down with the Ministry of Agriculture colleagues and developed a 10-year development strategy, which I believe is dynamic and also envisages to develop the sector to acceptable level. The stage we are in, I mean, the, the level we are in, is not acceptable at all for a country like Ethiopia, where we need to feed our communities, yeah. ourselves, you know, with protein of animal origin. Mm. So we developed that strategy, and thanks for the government, the government immediately after we launched that strategy, the government came up with El Yelemat Rufat mm -hmm. initiative. And that initiative squarely benefits, I believe, from that strategy we developed in partnership with the Ministry of Agriculture. Mm. So talking about Yelema Turufat or the bounty of the basket, if you will, uh, how is this strategy working in close collaboration with concerned actors, you know, driving the different initiatives in the country, development initiatives, including Yelema Turufat uh, in this regard? And how is Ilri contributing positive sharing? Yeah, you know, we're closely working with the Ministry of Agriculture and other actors, including private sector companies. And whenever they need our support, and also whenever we feel that we can, we have a, you know, a role to play in any of the initiatives, including the Yelema Trufat, we are contributing our share. From the design up to the implementation of Yelema Trufat, we are closely working with the Ministry of Agriculture and we're supporting the initiative and we are happy to play that role. I've also learned that uh, the International Livestock Research Institute is, is supporting the school feeding program by providing chicken with uh, protein. Um, so how is Ilri contributing positive share in the school feeding programs, especially by devising pilot projects in the different regions in the, in the country? Uh, thank you very much for asking that question, which is very, very near to my heart. As you know, I mean, the whole of Sub-Saharan Sub Africa and, you know, specifically Ethiopia, the level of stunting and wasting in children yeah. is very high. Mm. And uh, in the whole of Africa, and more specifically in Ethiopia, there is a homegrown school feeding system being implemented by the government in government schools. And we did a little bit of assessment on the content of the school feeding system, I mean the nutritional content of the school feeding system. Across the initiatives, the, it is rich in carbohydrate, in energy, but it's really, really deprived of animal protein or mm. protein. So we sat down and discussed to come up with this idea of how can we supplement or complement the ongoing school for, you know, feeding, program. feeding programs. So we came up with this idea of testing the impact of one egg per child per school day in five schools here in Ethiopia, in different regions, including Addis Ababa. And in doing that, what we did was we collected a baseline data to understand the physical, emotional, and biochemical you know, situ situations of the children in the school. And we started the feeding program. It is an ongoing program. We just finished collecting the midline data, and we're waiting for the next six months. We'll continue feeding them, and you know, we'll collect the in-line data. Once we have the in-line data, we will you know, come up with the, with the recommendation for the, to the government to include, to include that one egg per child per school day in the homegrown school feeding system. The International Livestock Research Institute is known for its research-based strategy. In this regard, how are you planning to continue your uh, research on the poultry subsector as part of the efforts being made to beef up the productivity while also 
supporting the different uh, national initiatives. Usually, I mean, we'll continue doing what we are doing, including, you know, developing alternative bridges uh, here at Ilri campus. We are currently developing four different, you know, bridges. Uh, soon we will test those, the performance of those breeds under on-farm condition, under farmer's management condition. Uh, we are also uh, trying to develop alternative feed for poultry producers using non-conventional feed resources. As you are well aware, I mean, the feed cost in the industry is skyrocketing. So we need, we are working, I mean, to come up with an alternative uh, feeding system using non-conventional feed resources. Uh, the third one is, and uh, which is, again, I mean, very, very important, is uh, creating demand. You know, increasing production and productivity level is one, but unless you create demand, you reach nowhere. With the Ministry of uh, Labor and Skills Development, MOLS, we are testing uh, a straight chicken frying system. Mm. And we launched the first uh, kiosks where, you know, unemployed youth get trained and, you know, sell uh, fried chicken in the street uh, in Awasa and Adama. And soon we will start the same uh, project here in Addis Ababa. Mm and other regions as well. So these are the three areas, the three areas we will, be, will continue working. But, but furthermore, we, what we usually do is we go back to our partners, we sat down with them and identify constraints and co-create, you know, co-design research areas and, you know, implement the projects jointly. Chicken is the most expensive diet in the country. So I've learned that you're providing, you're planning to provide fried chicken yes. at fair prices in yeah. different uh, regions, as you said. Can you, could you tell me more about that, spe especially when it comes to, you know, addressing the issues of uh, the cost of chicken in yeah. the country? You know, as I said it earlier, feed is a major cost when it comes to chicken production it reaches up to 70% of the cost of production. So anything we do to reduce the price of feed can contribute immensely in, you know, in, 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 in taking down the cost of chicken and chicken products. So we are working on developing a non-conventional, I mean, using non-conventional feed resources to, to reduce the, the cost of the feed. Number one. Number two, you know, usually, I mean, our experience in other countries is we need to increase the demand. Mm. When the demand increases, more chicken producers and private sector companies can come in into the system. By producing more, you can reduce the cost of production because mass production contributes a lot, isn't it? Mm. So by so doing, we can reduce the cost of production. The third one is we need to create demand in different directions. Number one, the ongoing, you know, one egg per child per day right. uh, program increases demand because we are introducing a culture of consuming more egg. So the demand will increase from the egg side. From the meat side, you know, we have this culture of, you know, uh, consuming chicken and chicken products during the holidays. So we need to break that cycle and, you know, avail chicken and chicken products to the average though from the street to grab a drumski stick and have his supper or lunch uh, as a fair price. A fair price. Yes. So we are training unemployed youth on the cooking, and also, you know, uh, you know, you know, delivering a healthy product in the kiosks, in the small kiosks, and we're testing the system in Adama and Awasa, and there are, you know, an encouraging results from that that new initiative, and soon you will see us in the streets of Addis. What are some of the major challenges that you're facing as we speak? Let me go back to what I mentioned earlier. One of the biggest challenge for the sector 
for the subsector development is fit cost. So all involved, all actors involved, including government, needs to devise a mechanism of you know, reducing the cost of fit, number one. Number two, in the long term, I see a challenge on the demand side. We need to create demand for consuming poultry and poultry products. Unless we create that demand, by only increasing the production productivity level, will not, will not take us anywhere. So we need to devise a mechanism of you know, increasing demand. Of course, demand has a lot to do with income. And don't forget that the population growth is there. Urbanization is there. And, you know, having you know, liquid, I mean, money or cash to spend on food of animal origin is there. Mm. So having this all will demand more to produce, but at the same time, we have to be able to reduce the cost of production. At the same time, the selling price, price of poultry and poultry products. Mm. If we do that, these are the challenges. And we need to work on this on those lines and reduce the I mean increase the demand and at the same time reduce the selling price of chicken and chicken products. If we do that, we can we can reach where we wanted to reach. Yeah. What is your message to everyone concerned? Yeah, my last message goes to private sector companies. I urge them to come and invest in the sector. It's a lucrative business. Let them invest on chicken and chicken value chain and support themselves as a business organization or a business people and at the same time feed their population on rich animal protein. My second message is for the research and development community. We need to give attention. No, the attention the subsector is getting is increasing and I'm seeing you know, positive development, but we need more attention from the development and research community. These are the two messages I have. Adjunct professor, principal scientist at the International Livestock Research Institute, Dr. Tadela, thank you so much for your ideas and for your time. Thank you very much. Well, dear viewers, with that, we come to the end of today's program. Many thanks for having been with us so far. Until I see you next time with yet another program, it's a goodbye from me, Shifar Alak.